Obligation to who? Huh? I can't hear. Speak. <laughs> Obligation to the men, not to the women. But do you know that? You don't know that. It's sunnah for the women. But, ah, I understand, you're learning new things about your religion. It is obligation for the men. It is not obligation. In the four mazhabs, Shafi'i, Hanafi, Shafi'i, Hanbali, and Maliki mazhab. It is obligation for the men. It is not obligation for the women. They can come, but it's not obligation for them. For the men, three times you miss the Juma, what happens? Huh? <laughs> three times for the men, if you miss the Juma prayers, you're out of the deen. You understand how heavy this is? But women, you're running to become men. You want to carry that weight? Allah has created everyone in their most perfect, most beautiful fitrat. So, we just finished the Juma. Juma is obligation. But if I ask you, what is the obligations of Juma? What is the farce in the Juma prayers? So many of you, you don't know. Correct? There is farce and there's sunnats of Juma. Let's leave Juma. If I say to take wudu, let's not go one step lower because we're in a holy association to talk about how to enter into the bathroom and do their business. <laughs> wudu. There is fars of the wudu and there is a sunnat of the wudu. Do you know? You cannot skip any of the fars. You skip the fars, your wudu is not complete. Your prayer, your zikr, nothing is accepted. But the sunnats of the wudu, there are so many and you can add. The fars of the wudu. You know, say. You see, even our murids, they don't know. But it's okay. Do you know why? Because we do more. We we're not stingy people. Believers, they're not like people from other nations. They just say, I just want to do the farz and I'm okay. No, we want to do more to show our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So washing of the hands, washing of the face. You wash your nose, you wash your mouth, you wash your ears, you wash your forehead, you wash the back of your neck, you wash your feet. There is farz in there and there's sunnats in there. It's also sunnah to begin every action with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. It's also sunnah that there is a prayer for every action of a wudu that you are doing. Do you understand? Now, whatever that you want to add more to make it more beautiful, can you add? Can you add, for example, salawat? What is wrong with that? Of course, you can. Can you add saying to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala when you're washing your hands, Ya Rabbi? Forgive me for the sins that I've committed from my hands. Can you say that? Of course you can. Well, people, they don't know their religion. And what they've been taught the past two, three generations, they think that is Islam. And anything that is different, first they say that is wrong. Not a question mark, not to say maybe I'm wrong. First, that is wrong. Why are you doing that? This attitude where, okay, I know a little bit, you're doing a lot, but I've never heard of it, but you are wrong and I'm right. This has nothing to do with ilm. This has to do with ego. This has to do with proudness and arrogance, not wishing to put your head down and to say, like Allah is saying, there is a knower above every knower. Now, the farz of the Juma prayer, we did. We added some sunnats in there too. Is that acceptable? Of course it is acceptable. Now, 
we got up and everyone, for example, in the old days, for 1,300 years, they've been keeping this. Everyone gets up to kiss the Imam's hand. This has stopped too. And they're teaching younger generations, Kullu haram. It's haram to kiss the hand. For 1,300 years, they've been doing it. So what do you do when we say, you've been doing it for over 1,000 years, and this is the Dalil from Quran and from Hadith, because now they get very stubborn. They don't want to say, yeah, you are right and I'm wrong. They say, well, you are all wrong and I'm right. They say, but we have 1,300 years of tradition. All wrong. This is ISIS. You understand? Same attitude, all wrong. This is Wahhabism, all wrong. Ahli Sunnah, it prizes manners, adab. To kiss the hand of the one who is older than you, that is adab. The Sahabi Kiram, they not only kiss the hands and the feet of the Prophet, they kiss each other's hands and feet. Do you know this? You don't know this, we are here to learn, you may learn, but if someone is stubborn, you cannot teach them anything. They're just going to reject, like Abu Jahil, like Abu Lahab. If they are highly intelligent people, you give them reasons, they say, no. Prophet showed miracles to them, he said, you are a magician. So now, the sunnah getting up, and greeting each other, that is a sunnah too. Correct? Can you say that is wrong? Can we say, why are you putting it in there? Uh, why are you kissing each other's hands, or kissing his hand, or greeting each other? Why? Is this a social club? It looks like a social club kind of gesture. You cannot say that. No person with intelligence or the right mind is going to say that, unless the person is very arrogant and stubborn. What about getting up to say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah? That is also a sunnah. Whose sunnah is that? That is a sunnah of the prophets when they got up to greet the Holy Prophet والسلام, when he entered into the Masjid al Aqsa on the night of the Mi'raj. They all got up. And they, doing this tahlil, this takbir, glorifying Allah. Then the Prophet said, they got up, they gave salawat to the Prophet, and the Prophet then said this, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. That's why we get up also, after everything, we give salawats first. When we greeting each other, we give salawats the w same way that the prophets they give salawat to the prophet wasalam. Then the prophet said wasalam, Allahu Akbar, meaning whatever praise that you give me, it is all due to Allah. Whatever praise that you give me, and Allah has put the name of His Habib there, Muhammad wasalam. There's nothing higher than that, the most praised. Why Wahhabis are saying we should change his name? Because the most praised must be Allah. I've never heard that before, huh? The most praised must be Allah, not the Prophet. That's why they're saying, don't even put Allah and Muhammad wasalam, there, because that is a shirk. You're putting them on the equal status. Now what you want to do? Take out Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah, Allah. Muhammad Rasulullah, right next, the Prophet is his Habib, is a creature. It is beloved one. Majority don't know this. So, when they are ignorant and they are arrogant, those are the worst. When you're ignorant and you're sincere and you want to know, there is so much that we may say that you are going to learn. So now, 
various farce of doing things. And you may have certain sunnats to add it, to make it more beautiful. Then there are sunnat actions. Sunnat actions. That if you make those sunnat actions to add more things in it, to make it more beautiful, that's even better. But it's not for you and me to decide, or anyone to decide. It has to be decided by the one who has permission and authority. For example, let me give you a very simple, so that everyone understands. Is it sunnah to eat dates? It is. Good. What about if I take a date that is grown in China? Is that still sunnah? Of course, it's still date, right? What if I take a date and I cut it and I put some people, they like to put badem, uh, almonds, inside and to eat it? Is that still sunat? Yes, of course, it is still date. Your intention, eating the dates, Prophet like dates. There is so many khasiyat, uh, benefits to dates. So what if you put the dates inside Ashura. What if you cook with dates? So you can. Nobody ever says this is bidah, right? Can you say it's bidah? It's not bidah. Meaning you take something and you make it. Now what can be a bidah? For example, women cover up. There's a hijab. Now women can cover up according to their traditions of different countries if it is conforming to Islam. Women can cover up according to the, say, African uh, way, only if it's according to Islam, and it is, it is not imitating unbelievers. It's very important. People in China, they can cover up according to their own custom, but only according to Islam, and is not an imitation of a religion. But what if, and there are so many, they cover up, From head to toe, they cover up. But when you look at them, you see everything there. They're wearing everything tight, and they're showing everything. And now, <laughs> they, they like to wear those, what do you call those pants? Women's pants, tight ones? I don't know what they're called. Huh? Boga pants. Boga pants. They're wearing that. Then they're wearing hijab. Then they walk like this. Then they say, I'm a Muslim man. I say, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. So now, you're being very slick. You are saying, no, cover up. I cover up, but I'm going to show everything. There is a hadith for that too. Prophet said, in the Ahir Zaman, you're going to find the women, they're going to be covered, but they're going to be naked. <laughs> he has already said that. So now you have to know. Are you just playing around with the law, with the shariat of Islam, just to suit your ego, to do what you want? Or are you really interested? Because Islam didn't come yesterday. There's 1,400 years of Islamic history. Maybe you want to study. Maybe you want to learn a little bit. Or you want to just make up as you go along. So what is the reason? You want to play around with the law? or? You really want to know, what is the reason for covering up wearing the hijab? Of course, nowadays they say, uh, even hijab, that word is not in the Quran. So, wearing hijab is bidah. Very quickly, they're changing. Very slick. You see, just like that group of people, Allah says, cut one cow, one heifer, bakara. And they say, hmm. Bakara, young or old? Bakara. Not too young, not too old. Ah, black or white? Bakara. Not too black, not too white. They keep asking, they keep asking. Muslims. Samitna wa ta'na. We hear and we obey. This is ayat al karim The ayat of Amana Rasul. We hear and we obey. Who said this? Allah said this. Who said this? The Prophet said this. Who said this? The Sahabi Kiram, they said this. 
You know what else they said? They say, Ya Rasulullah, may my parents be sacrificed for you. May my children be sacrificed for you. And they meant it. They sacrificed their parents and their children for the Prophet. Oh, that was for the Prophet. It's not for today's man. They did it to Hazrat Abu Bakr too. They obeyed him. Those who did not obey, he said, now you are going against to the words of the Khalifa. You are going, going against the, the words of the Prophet and the words of Allah. Either you come around or are you going to be away from us? They came to attack him. He pulled the sword and he finished them. They pray, they fast, they do everything, but they didn't accept him as a Khalifa. They did it to Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Osman, and Hazrat Ali. Yes. That's why all the Khalifas, they had so many enemies inside the people, inside the Muslims. They ran to kill them, to assassinate them. And except for Hazrat Abu Bakr, all the rest were assassinated. So learning obedience, what is obedience? If you say we obey only the Prophet we ask you a very simple question. How do you know the Prophet? The Prophet gave specific instructions. These are the teachings of Islam. You who listen, you're going to pass it to those who come after you. And maybe they are going to be better than you. So those Sahabi, they pass it on to the Tabi'in. The Tabi'in obeyed them. The Tabi'in took that knowledge and they passed it to the Tabi Tabi'in. Tabi Tabi'in, continue, continue, continue. This is the Ahli Sunnah way. Until the fall of the Ahli Sunnah way with the fall of the Hilafat, that everything just broken up like that. Muslim no longer one ummah broken up into tribes and nationalities and everyone says, I know the best. So there is no more obedience. But there are inheritors of the prophets. These are called alims. You think alim is the one who gets a diploma from university that is an alim? Medina University. What is an alim? The person who has what? Ilm. Good. What is the highest ilm? What is the highest ilm? What is the highest knowledge? Huh? Wrong. Knowledge of Allah. Can anything be higher than knowledge of Allah? Can you say? Knowledge of Allah. But how are you going to get knowledge of Allah? Prophet is saying, don't look, don't try to figure out, don't try to make your own faulty logic, your own fuzzy logic, and you say, well, because of this, because of that. It's already been answered. These questions have been asked. More than 1,000 years ago, it's already been answered. That's why the Muslim civilization can move forward. That's why with 2 billion Muslims, we are no good for nothing. With all the oil money and all technology and education, we are no good for nothing. Because people are still fighting for 20 years. When is the moon coming out? Today, tomorrow or the next day? When is Eid? Because they make the nation to be so busy with useless things. All these questions, you asked it before. It's finished. Now move on. Move ahead. Build a civilization. And every country that the Muslim went to, they brought it to the highest civilization. Every nation and every country, except after the fall of the Hilafat. So now, how are you going to know Allah? How are you going to be an alim? How are you going to know the knowledge of Allah? The Prophet had already said this. What did he say? One who doesn't know himself, he does not know his Lord. If you don't know yourself, you don't know your Lord. Those who don't like this hadith, very quickly they say, ah, oh, this is um, 
weak hadith. This is this hadith, this is that hadith. How are you going to know yourself? There is a way. From 1400 years, the Prophet taught man how to know himself. And he has taught this knowledge which is called tariqat, tasawuf and Sufism. From the time of the Prophet ﷺ to those higher level sahabi kiram who wants to know themselves, who wants to know their Lord. For them, it is not just learning the shariat. For them, it is to be on tariqat to have marifat. It's not too many, it's only a few. <coughs> and he opened 40 ways to Hazrati Ali, Karamallahu Wajha, that the spiritual teachings of 40 ways, these are not sects. Sects means one group and another group fighting because they are different. Ways means they're all heading to the Prophet. Four mazhab, four main highways. Now, 41 tariqat, you're no longer on the highway, now you're on the super highway. You understand? It is all heading to the same direction, but how are you going to get there? That is another situation. So 40 tariqat, he opened it to Hazrat Ali, Karamallah Wajha. And one way to Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. Now, What are all the teachings of all the tariqats? What are they teaching? For you to know yourself, to know Allah. To fulfill the reason of your creation. Because you have been created to know Allah and to worship Allah. This is Ayat al-Karimah. You cannot worship Allah if you don't know Him. How are you going to know him? You're going to know yourself. What it means to know yourself. This is what we said yesterday. You are saying la ilaha illallah. What are you saying la ilaha illallah? What ilah are you saying la to? What ilah? If you say I don't have an ilah, then why are you saying it? Then why Allah is ordering us to say it? If you say, well I have no ilah, I only have Allah. Then why are we saying it? You ever think of it that way? You ever think why we're saying La ilaha illallah although we are Muslims? Ha huh, ha. Huh. So there are other ilahs. More than the physical that you have inside of you. That you have to get rid in order to reach to Allah. This is what Tariqatun Naqshbandiya is. For you to understand what are these ilahs. How to say la to them. And the only way to do that is through Muhammad Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam. There is the only way. Not. But please. <laughs> the sunnah of the Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam is not just contained in a couple of books in Barnes and Noble. Okay? It's not even contained in just six books of the Hadith Sharif. There are hundreds of books. And this is according to book knowledge people. Then there are those who are connected to the Prophet ﷺ from that time until now. They don't need books. It is for us to know Allah, to worship Allah, to become a servant to Allah. It is impossible to become a servant to Allah if you don't know how to serve the Prophet I went somewhere last year during the Maulid season and I'm saying we are trying to become servants to the Prophet. This is why we're putting this Nali Sharif. There is a reason. This is the shape of the sandal of the Prophet We're putting it on top of our heads to say that May we be dust underneath his feet. And we are on his way. 
We're wearing this peacock feather because this was the sunnat, the practice of who? Which Sultan? Sultan Selim Khan, the Khalifa, the first Khalifa of the Ottomans. When he crawled into the Rauza Sharif, crawling. And he took the broom that is made from peacock feathers, which Wahhabis are going to say this is uh, bidah practice because Prophet never had peacock feathers to sweep his grave. He took that broom and he swept it and he broke one feather and he put it in his turban and he says, I am a servant to the Prophet. But people only know how to judge. Oh, why are you doing that? There is a way. And in reality, every one of us, our grandfathers, our great-grandfathers, our great-great-grandfathers, they were all following in this way, one way or another. But we're a lost generation. And we look at the sunnats, the forgotten sunnats of the Prophet as something so strange. Strange. But it's okay because Prophet said Islam began strange and it will end strange. My welcome, my salams to the strangers. So we want to be servants. We want to learn obedience. We want to learn taqwa. This is why we're on the super highway. Do you understand? Because we're following the tradition of Hazrat Abu Bakr when all the Sahabis were obeying him. We're following the tradition of Hazrat Salman al Farisi when he continued the way of the Naqshbandi order, when the Sahabis were giving bayat to him and following him and obeying him. And that continued. It went all the way to India. Then it went all the way to the Caucasus and it went all the way to Cyprus and to other places, <coughs> America for instance, for us to continue the tradition of Samitna wa Ta'na. But we have been so poisoned in this system any amount of respect that we see, we say this is wrong. They asked Shaykh Maulana, they say, you're coming here. You enter into the room and everyone stand up. And he says, didn't Prophet say, don't stand up for me? Shaykh Maulana, he has the haybat and the gentleness of a prophet. And he says, my son, even the prophet stood up when a dead Jew was passing in front of him in a coffin. Maybe I'm a little better than a dead Jew. And he says, why are they coming to kiss your hand? He says, my son, they kiss because I'm a grandfather. And they love me. The way that the Sahabis, they love each other and they love the Prophet. They kiss your feet. My son, the Sahabis kiss the Prophet's feet. They kiss each other's feet. <laughs> One Tabi'in sa said, I'm worse than the dust in the nose of the horse that is being ridden by Hazrat Muawiyah. And that is true. We are very far away from them. But there are certain holy people that they have sacrificed everything and they have given up themselves. <coughs> their kurban is not an animal, their kurban is their nafs. And they are saying, Allah is calling to you. Allah is remembering you. Are you remembering him? So 
So now, there are so many things. <coughs> in the old days, in the tariqat, they not only took the sunnats of the Sahabis and the Holy Prophet wasalam, they would take the sunnat of the earlier prophets too. And they're putting it. We're doing it too, by the way. The shalwar that we're wearing, this is a sunnat of Hazrat Ibrahim salam. It comes with divine blessings. If you're wearing something else by uh, some designer, Armani, or something, then it comes with whoever made it, whether they are bringing blessings or they're bringing curses. But I like to wear a scarf that has uh, the word Chanel on it. Huh. Good, because you are putting now a kafir capitalist sign that is obviously for women, rich women who want to be free with everything on top of your head. Mashallah to you. Do you understand the symbolism? We're not talking about a piece of cloth here. We're talking about what it means. If you don't know what it means, then change your clothes. Wear something western and go out on the street and say this is the same, it's just a piece of cloth. But you know what it means. You know what the hijab means. Tasattur means what? Modesty. Not only for women, for the men too. It means modesty. It means when a person looks from a distance, they cannot tell whether you are sev 17 years old or 70 years old. And their perception and treatment of you is not going to be this object. We are adults here. Yeah? We may say, not as a sexual object. So, there are so many lost traditions. That is what Hazrat Mahdi is going to come to bring, to revive the forgotten traditions of the Prophet. <laughs> so now, we may make zikr, and the zikr, according to the 41 tariqats and hundreds of branches of those tariqats, according to the time, according to the place, according to the authority and the permission, they may change a couple of things, make some things with that authority and permission within the confines of the shariat to let it to happen, to pull the people to Allah. Some zikr, you sit, some zikr, you stand, some zikr, you jump up and down to make the zikr. Some zikr, you turn off the light completely and you don't say a single word. And some zikr, you have hundreds of people all moving in the same way. This is also a sunnah. So, May we learn more. May we have more faith. May we have more manners. May we get rid of our wrong characteristics. Because the knowledge is there. Majority of the time, people cannot learn the knowledge because of their manners. Inshallah, we are here to learn the manners. The manners that we're following is the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised. Surely we have created you in a tremendous nature. Allah is speaking about the Holy Prophet As much as we are doing that much light the Prophet will give to us, that much more light will bring to the world. This is what made Islam to spread from east to west, north and south. You think Islam was spread by people who just come and say, wrong, no, haram, bida, shirik, kufur. You think it's spread by that? It's spread by people who understand people. It's spread by people, holy people, who have compassion and they have a heart and they find a way to enter into another person's heart. Sometimes it is through petting, sometimes it is through a smack. Like they say in Turkish, what? Sometimes 
one smack is better than 1,000 words of advice. May we not get this smack, inshallah. Wa min Allahu tafiq al-Fatiha.